I'm gonna go today and do a little liquor store hunting up in Springfield, Missouri. First stop, Whiskey River Markets. It looks like a nice size store. A couple of drive-through lanes here. Let's go see what we find. Got a welcome dog. Little shop. How's it going? Beautiful she's dog. The first, she's the first one that she's seen today. You're the okay. first one she's seen today. I'm, she's I'm, I'm early. I understand. Yeah, she gets very busy. Cool. First customer. So you've got a few gems hiding up there. Where's your bourbon selection at? They Hiding back there. Anything really nice back here I need to pay attention to? A lot of new riffs. I've got the new riffs. I've got the new Owen Edens. I don't know if you've heard about them. Oh, now I can pet you. Now we're friends. You know anything about the Green River? I don't know anything. Like, what, what, what is Green River? Tell me about Green that. Green River is back in the Prohibition days. They started it back up and allowed the license to be backed out. This is actually license number 10. So yeah. they have been with us since. Prohibition. Well, I mean, I've heard of the distillery. A lot of folks source it. They make a lot of product for other people, but I don't think I've ever seen the Green River label. That's pretty cool to the have that kind of history on there. 10th distillery in Kentucky. And of course, the Jefferson's, uh, the ocean one. We love having those. Those always change. They're very hit or miss for me, though, on whether or not they're worth having. Now, like, some of them are great, some of them are terrible. Do you like the, mask? the weeded one I have is the best one, but I haven't had all the weeded, right? I don't think I've had two weeded, so and I don't the voyage, know. I mean, it always changes, so yeah. we might have one voyage and then it's already two voyages later when we get them again. A lot of folks love these Redwood Empires right here. I haven't tried their rye. Are those new Rift Store picks or? No, unfortunately just... we did go through ours. The only pick that we have right now is the Blue Note. So it's uncut is the one up front. I may try this Green River right here. I've had a few products by Green River that I didn't really like, but I'm wondering if they put the good stuff in their own bottle. New Riff Single Barrel. I just bought a new Riff Single Barrel not long ago though. St. Patrick's Edition. I'll take that Blue Note uncut there as well, I think. Yeah, I've got one at the house I haven't opened yet, but I hear really good things about them. It doesn't hurt to have a backup bottle of that. Now, have you ever had Blue Note? I've had a blue note before, but not the uncut. Uh-oh, we got sample time. It's my favorite time, sample time. Is this an uncut or is this the one back there? Okay, let's try that. All right, 93 proof blue note. That's interesting. I think it'll be better at the higher proof point though. Not bad. I like that. We're gonna have to do our own blue note store pick at some point. <laughs> also, it's a good first stop of the day. Thank you. Hopefully we can use all of that footage. Always a lot of copyrighted music playing in these places, which makes it difficult, but they had a decent selection. We did buy that Green River, which I had never seen. I'd never seen Green River. Now I know they make a lot of stuff for a lot of people and I've had some Green River whiskey that I didn't really like, but I've never seen their label. So I figured that would be worth trying. And as much as y'all seem to like those Blue Note uncut, unfiltered, even though I have not opened mine yet, I think it's in our next series of bottles to review. I've never tried it, 60 bucks. I feel figured I'd pick up a backup bottle, or at least I really want to do a store pick with them. So I figured having a different store pick from the one I have at least gives me a couple of samples to see whether or not that would be a good idea. All right, next stop was just one exit up 65 there. Whiskey Tangos. How's it going? What's the good stuff hiding back there? What's on the side of that Joseph Magnus? I can't see to the left. This is just the loose country. It's a bourbon aged beer. What's your, what's your price on that? I'll take it. If you don't mind me asking, I probably don't want it, but that, that Whistle Pig 15 right there. Have you ever had that cognac barrel finished chicken cock? Yes. I just can't justify it. Can't justify it. Where's most of your bourbon? Back here somewhere? Okay. You don't see this many barrel picks in a store this size. Ah, this is MGP right here. Red breast 15 and cash strength. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take some samples. It's early in the morning. It might be too early to be hitting the samples, but we sampled at the last place, and now like we got to do it though. More will it four year rye? That stuff's everywhere. Black Maple Hill. All right, so I bought this bottle, but I want to say it was the blue label, the bourbon, and I just did not like it at all. And I know Black Maple Hills has a whole history, but those bottles. <sighs> And I just never see that. I never see that. I'm having a hard time buying that guy because I did not like the blue label. But it's been a long time. Maybe my palate has evolved. I don't I don't know. Good to see some red lines here. They sent us some stuff that was pretty good. Sagamore rum cask finish. Too much to choose from early here. And of course the Green River is like $5 cheaper over here. Such is life. Every time I see Knob Creek 12, somebody's like, oh, you didn't buy the Knob Creek 12. I can't find it anywhere here. It's literally everywhere. Like there's a lot of Knob Creek 12 out there right now, which is why I don't buy it. And I know I won't 
I've got two at the house, I think, and sooner or later I'll want one. I won't be able to find it, but it's everywhere at this point. What is a single barrel? It is nine years old. Sometimes those Knob Creek single barrels are super old and you gotta go pick those up. I've seen those, you know, 13, 14 year old Knob Creek single barrels. That's what we use, some single malt stuff here. Ooh, what have we got here? I've never seen that bottle before. 90 proof? Like, is it just a, fa a fancy bottle? I just assume it's a fancy bottle. I don't I don't know what that is. All right, so you say you got a Knob Creek pick. What's the best pick you've got here? Between these two, we got a planter's pick. These are both Missouri, uh, well, Missouri whiskey, bourbon, both around the St. Louis area. Well, those are worth trying. Let's try yeah. those. And this is that nine-year Knob Creek pick you had on the shelf back there? Or this one's actually the one right behind you. This one is, yeah, it's it's about nine years. It's the same one as back there. Knob Creek store pick. Oh, that's delicious. Knob Creek's good. Ooh, that's got some proof on it too. 120 proof. That's why it's delicious. I have to go eat something. I keep drinking all these samples. Should have had breakfast this morning. I'm gonna be drunk before lunch. Oh, it's, dude, I can handle it. I got the tolerance. I was built for this. This one's good, but not, it's not as good as that Knob Creek. It's a little, it's just kind of sweetness. Almost a little bit of like bitter oak, like it was rapidly aged. Not, not a lot of that, but like it just, oh, it's toasted. That's why it's toasted. So they put it in a toasted barrel and toasted barrels can oftentimes add that little bit of bitter oak char. And so this one is, and they make this product. This is not sourced as far as you know. No, they distill in uh, age stuff. It's always good to try something new. Planters. That's not bad. It's young. I don't know how old that is. Maybe a couple of years, few years. Or it could just be the climate up here makes it seem young. I wonder if it's just being cold a lot or something like that makes it seem a little young. Some potential there though. Save the heavy hitter for last. All right, so this is the good one. Barrel King Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 125 proof. Got the tater sticker on the back. That's better than the planters for sure. Like that's a pretty solid bottle. What's the price on this? 125. Oh, that sucks. Cause now I got a decision to make, right? Like it's good, but is it 125 good? If that were like 60, 70 bucks, I'm taking that home with me all day long. Mm. All right, I'm gonna have to pass, but somebody let me know how bad I messed up by not buying this one right here. This is a good bottle. All right, man, I appreciate it. Thank you. So we didn't buy anything there, but that kind of sucks. Like Whiskey Tango's got a great selection. A lot of barrel picks, some of them really good. That one that was really solid though was just $125. And we got a lot of, y'all gotta understand this is like day three on this trip of bourbon hunting. And I've already bought a lot of bottles and spent way, way too much money. And so I've gotta be a little more selective. If it's, you know, 20, 30 bucks, fine, we'll buy it if it's interesting. But I gotta be real selective on those $125 bottles because those break the budget super fast. And so it would have to be, oh my God, kind of exceptional for me to, to spend that on it right now, though on another day where I hadn't bought any bottles for a month and that was the only one I was gonna buy, I might've jumped right on that. Our next stop here is Brown Derby Fine Wine and Spirits. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Ah, not too bad, man. Looks like you've got some gems hidden back up here. Some Elijah Craig barrel proof, Larceny barrel proof. What batches are those? A1. Looks like A1 on both of those. Yes. Knob Creek 12. I've been seeing a lot of Knob Creek 12. They must be putting out a ton of that lately. And it used to be super hard to find and now it's everywhere. I got some last week, but it's been a while before that. Okay. So where's your bourbon selection? Is it just all along these walls here? Yeah, there's a store okay. picks right there. These are store picks? And the wall. That's okay. All Another blue note, I just bought a blue note store pick. This is the unfiltered though, not an uncut. What do you know about this one right here, this private stock? I don't know, Jay Ryger? Cabernet, ooh, just don't think I've ever had a Cabernet finish that I like. I Maybe I'm being too harsh. You might be right, you, do you, you have samples of those? Do not. Another Rigers Kansas City whiskey. Sagamore double oaked. Looks tempting right there. And that is the best price we've seen on these Bell Meads in a long, long time. For those that don't know, these have been discontinued to everywhere we see them, 70, 80, 100 dollars. So Jeffers Creek taking over the old Weller bottles. Tell me about these bottles right here, man. What do you know? That's like some sort of limited Christmas Rigers. Just a label. Just a la same whiskey, just a label. They talk about on the back how they like blend it and little hint of sherry, like that's just their normal whiskey yeah, though. Normal, yeah. Okay. Yeah, is this good. is it any good? I like it. You like it? Pretty good stuff. It's a little smoky, a little, a little sweet, kind of like Kansas City. 
<laughs> Do you know how they age these? Anything about that? I don't know particulars. I'm a little iffy on finished whiskey. It depends on what it is. If it's subtle, that could be really good. But then if they like rapid age it, they put it in small barrels. Like a lot of these small distilleries will do staves or chips or small barrels. And that's always awful. It's a little on the pricey side, but we need to try some local stuff. What about this Ben Holiday? Like that's bottled in bond. So that's gotta be pretty good. You like this one? This one's really good? I think that's probably it. All right, so I, I got a decision to make on this Riger stuff. I'm gonna take that one for sure. You think the holiday's really good and this one's just all right? I mean, it's good, yeah. yeah. Really good. Okay, we're gonna go with the holiday. I'll put this one back then. Thank you. You too. Budget, 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 budget. Don't buy too many whiskeys. Don't buy too many whiskeys. Don't buy too many. We still got like three stores to stop at at least. And then we may go to more. We're going to hook up with uh, one of the, our viewers here in just a little bit. I almost bought another one of those Bell Meads, but I got a couple of backups already. I almost bought that Rigers, but I, you know, budget, budget. This is the third day. This is the third day. We've got to be over 20 bottles since we left the house over the last week. So next stop, Macadoodles. But before we jump out here and check out what they have to offer, do me a favor, hit the like button, help us spread the word on these. Y'all seem to be enjoying these bourbon hunting videos, but these are by far the most expensive videos we make. All the driving around, buying bottles, like we've only stopped at a few stores. We're not even halfway done with our list yet, or maybe exactly halfway done with our list. We're already bumping like 200 bucks, and that's not even the cost to get to Missouri and all that nonsense. So it just helps spreading the word, right? Watch it till the end, hit the like button. Like that really helps us out. Share this out to people who you think might be interested in this type of content, because the money we've spent already is probably as much as we're going to make on YouTube ad revenue off of this video anyway. And so anything I buy from here on out, well, that's just coming out of my pocket. So my bourbon budget isn't quite that healthy and y'all could help out in that way. Also, obviously supporting patrons and buying the merch and stuff really allows us to, to continue to try to take these videos up to the next level. So feel free to support in that way, but it doesn't require any money to watch to the end and hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so. Hey, how's it going? More Riggers. A Kentucky Owl is always tempting, but I can't come off the $300 for it. You know, every time I see it, I'm like, I'm tempted because somebody told me Batch 9 was one of the best bottles they'd ever had, but I just can't bring myself to do it. Have you ever had it? Yes. Don't know that it's worth $300. <laughs> That's the problem. Just got Old Pepper Bourbon and Rye. Are those, in, like, I've never heard of them. Never, never seen anything about them. You think those are good? Absolutely. Um, I also have a single barrel of the rye. You prefer the bourbon or the rye? Bourbon. What about this Old Soul Tin Type, right? I just bought a bottle of that not long ago, but I haven't tried it yet. We got to try it Thursday. Is it's it good? Fantastic. Okay. I mean, seven year MGP at cast strength. Yeah, hard to beat that for sure. Yeah, let's let's look at that. Pretty sure it's Barton juice, not 100 percent sure. Barton's pretty good stuff though, mm -hmm. 100 proof Barton. All right, that that breaks my budget, but I'm gonna have to take that one. Anything else really interesting here? Any little hidden gems you think I should try? You know, I typically don't like Missouri bourbon. Our weather's just not right for it. The West Bottoms. That's really really good. Mm -hmm. I just bought what was it? It was some Missouri bourbon. It was bottled in Bond. Oh, Ben Holiday. Yeah, is that good? Absolutely. Okay. I might have one for you to try. What is that? Truman Reserve. Man, it's got a proper Glen Cairn and everything. Look at it. We don't mess around here. No, no stupid little plastic thimble cups, right? Nope. Proper Glen Cairn. Show me the bottle. Truman Reserve. Truman Reserve, Golden Valley. Let me see the other side there. Does it say anything on the back? Okay, so just the logo. Mm -hmm. Now, what are your thoughts on this one? Excellent. A lot of caramel. A little caramel. dusty on the nose. A little bit. Very it's light. What's the proof on that? 80. 80? Now, is it just young or to be that light? Flavor wise, they're good. The flavors there are good, I think but it's very, very light. Yeah, I think you said it's a two year. Mm, yeah, that's that's the problem. Not a bad whiskey at all. I'd love to see that at four, five, six years old right. with a little more proof on it. It'd be two years old and not just taste like dry corn. That's true. Yeah, that, I've done, I'm not getting a lot of youth as far as like graininess on it, which is nice. And you say this is uh, this is a local product? It's on Truman Lake um, in Clinton, Missouri. Okay, awesome, man. Well, I think I'm gonna grab this guy right here. Anything else? Y'all hide any, like a, the allocated stuff in a case somewhere that I need to look over? Uh, or... I do have some stuff over in a okay. case over here. We 
manage three bubbles each of the seven black labels. Tell me about those. I don't know anything about those. Unfortunately, with three bubbles each, I don't get to try them. Uh, they're from Barrel Craft Spirits, and their shelf ready stuff is great. And I've got a single barrel of their rye on the way. Okay. Yeah, we just did our first store pick with Barrel, so I forgot that was their. Yeah, that's their shelf label. I'm in love with the Heaven's Floor Ten. Years. That's a good one. I got that bottle. Yeah. That's delicious. Their shelf ready stuff is okay. There's nothing wrong with it. People are going to lock up rear right now. <laughs> that's where we're at in this world, huh? Yeah, it's feeling real froggy. I've got one bottle of the dog father. What is the dog father? Really, there's not a lot of information out there. They do okay. two bottles a year. They, they got a 12 year product they and then. 12 years, they do 2,000 bottles a year. Okay. And in 15 years, the dog father, they do 1,000 bottles a year. Okay. So, more rare than Pabby. Not more desirable, though. Nah. <laughs> better whiskey though. Is it? That's better than Pappy's. I've tried all six Pappy's. Okay. Dry. Are they good? Yes. Are they worth it? No. I mean, not worth two or three thousand dollars for sure, but whew, you, you tempted me, but I don't, 549, I, yeah. Yeah, 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 I might have passed like on Like I said, that. you guys be feeling froggy. Yeah, you gotta really want that one. All right, man, I appreciate it. Well, we're gonna grab this old Absolutely. pepper here, and I hope this turns out to be the best thing I've ever had. All right, so now we are over budget. Uh, we have bought, officially bought too much whiskey on this particular excursion, and we still got two or three stores left to go to. Y'all let me know, did I get a good buy on that old pepper for like 80 something bucks, or did I waste my money? Hi. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm not bad, just one, can I just sit at the bar? Yeah, Is that okay? absolutely. Okay, just help myself in yeah, there? Yeah, you're good. All right, thank you. Oops. Having lunch today? I am gonna have some lunch, yes. Yeah, get you a drink. Um, what about this black spiced old fashioned? What is that? Is that is that good? Should I do that? It's do good. Like I mean, it? it has like a blackberry syrup okay. in place of your simple syrup or your sugar. Is that the best bourbon drink you make here? I would not say so. You think a normal old fashioned is better than that one? Yes. It'll just give me an old fashioned. Okay. Thank you. You're uh, let's just go with that strip, I guess. Medium. Yeah. All right. So, excellent recommendation for lunch. I had their Cajun, um, I think it was a New York strip and an old fashioned, and they were both really, really good. The problem you don't realize is like, I've been eating meat only for like five or six weeks now, and I've dropped some weight, it's been good. Like it's been good for me, the, the eating meat only, no carbs whatsoever, but like what you don't realize is after you've been doing it for a few weeks, is like you just get to where you don't like it at all. Like nothing's great. So like normally if I had a good ribeye or a good New York strip, I would just be like, that would just be the most awesome thing ever. And now your taste buds are like, really? You're eating this crap again? All right. So all of it's just kind of, you're just kind of numb to everything at that point, which I guess is good. You eat less and you end up not so fat. We are now here at Barrels Wine and Spirits. Let's go check out their selection. Ooh, more of those Goose Islands right there. Penelope Barrel Strength Toasted. How's it going? I'm always doing all right. I'm just checking out your bourbon selection. <laughs> that, that tends to be the case at a lot of places. It's just that time of year. Yeah, I understand. All the stuff comes out at the end of the year and then early it's just kind of dry. Anything interesting you've got hiding in here though I should pay attention to? No. Not really. Looks like you got it figured out with that little basket and on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so nothing there, but honestly, that's for the best. I've bought way too much whiskey already, as I always do on every one of these. If I was just out hunting, there's a lot of these bottles I probably wouldn't pick up and buy. But I want to try local stuff as I go to different places. I want to see what I could get there. And, and we're really looking for some of those small distilleries that we might be able to help and provide some exposure, you know, really um, showcase what they're capable of. And so I want to try as many of those as possible. All right, next stop is the Brown Dirt. Derby International Wine Center. And I'm here with Brian. Brian. We hooked up with a local that's gonna, he said, this is the spot. Like if we're gonna come here, we've gotta come here to this place. So we're gonna see if he's right or if he just wasted our time. Yeah. This is the best liquor store in Springfield. If you want something nice, you go here. This is the place to go. So they've got the biggest selection out of all of them. Yeah, and this is kind of the higher end. Like you can go some other places, but this is the nice place to go in Springfield. Well, let's go check it out, man. Let's see what's up. It's like the Walmart of wine. Have you had this Green River right here yet? I just oh, bought right. one of those, a little iffy. I don't know. I've, I've had some Green River stuff, but it was like in a different bottle, like it, you know, <laughs> sourced from them. Yeah. I didn't love it. So I'm a little, little iffy on it. Let's see if I can find anything else. I bought a, some local stuff as okay, well yeah. while I'm here. Yellowbird up there on the top. I don't know what that is. That Black Maple Hill up there, have you ever had that? 
I bought a bottle, it's been a long time, and I didn't care anything for it, so now I'm afraid to, afraid to try it. All right, so nothing out here really jumps out at me. Anything you see that looks particularly of interest? No, I watch your channel to get an idea what, what, <laughs> what you're supposed to be it. drinking. Somebody just gave me a bottle of that Bib and Tucker. I haven't opened it yet, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try that one soon, yeah. but I haven't haven't opened it yet. You know, we never got this before. I always thought this was kind of a local thing, but I find out that it's just, not. Yeah, it's just like the cheap Four Roses, which is not bad, but it's it's not like this is exceptional right here. This one is where it's at. So just buy that. Now I do drink a lot of this one, mm -hmm. but I think I like the single barrel even better than that one. And it's cheaper most places. Redline here makes some interesting stuff. I've never tried this particular bottle, yeah. but the ones I've had from them have been pretty good. It's How MGP. Old oh, no, Old Forester does not put their label on anything that's bad. So if it says Old Forester, you you can, you know, now like the, what was it? The King Ranch, right? So they did the King Ranch finish. I didn't love that, but that's because I didn't love the finish. Yeah. Um, the whiskey itself is good. The 1920s, fantastic. Like all of those I've had. I don't think I've had the 1870, yeah. but all the rest of those are, are fantastic yeah. whiskeys. Looks like some hiding over here. So I haven't had the Hewling Station. I did just buy a Blue Note. That's an uncut, unfiltered store pick that I bought. I bought one just a few minutes ago, okay, so I'm not gonna buy another one. Is that $44, $45 for an uncut? Yeah. I think that's a good bit better price than I just paid for the one I got. I wanna say I paid a lot more than that for it, so I, I got ripped off, but it's a pretty good bottle from what I hear. I have one, and then I'm thinking about trying to do a store pick with them for Bruzel, so I wanted to get two samples just okay, to make yeah. sure there are no, you know, I don't get one that's exceptional and the next yeah. one sucks kind of thing, right? So let's go look at the prison in here. So we've got some Nulu picks. Some old Crown Royal there or something. What is that? The Crown, should, should I try Crown Royal XO? I think I can find a Canadian I like before I find a Scotch I like. Yeah. Nate, yeah. sorry about that, Nate. Yeah. Blended Canadian whiskey finished in cognac cast. Comes in a fancy box. Good. Yeah, that's probably why I'm not buying it. All the good bottles are empty up top. 43 year old Canadian club. What in the... See in Kentucky, if you go 12 years, it's perfect. In Canada, it's so cold. They're like, we're gonna age this for 137 years to make it decent. Like that's that's why it's hard to find a really good Canadian whiskey. That one looks interesting. It's definitely an interesting bottle. So this is their barrel pick of something. Bourbon Rubenesque single barrel bottle and bond. So a minute ago I had two whiskeys I was looking at. Both of them were kind of semi-local, and one of them was bottle and bond. And a lot of people ask, like, what does bottle and bond mean? Like realistically, these days, bottle and bond doesn't mean that much, but it does mean this is a good whiskey. Like that's yeah. pretty much what it means. Is like at least they didn't cut it, they didn't take any shortcuts, right? Yeah. It's aged at least four years, it's a hundred proof, it's not gonna be rapidly aged or blended with a bunch of crap. Like you're just gonna have yeah, new forms. I've never heard of this one. Yeah, I've never heard of this one either. What's the price on that? $69. Produced, warehoused, and bottled by Wood Hat Spirits. <sighs> That's tempting. I have tried some new loos, but are your new loos spectacular? Are they better than all the other new loos? I have no idea. I've had a customers come in. I haven't personally been able to try them, but I've had a customers come in and buy the Grey Cap, which is Missouri exclusive. Okay. And he's like, I had it for three weeks, opened it, couldn't stay out of it. All right. Came back, he bought the black cap, or like the charcoal cap, whatever you want to call that color, and was like, I haven't seen him back yet, but he probably could have came back when I haven't been here, but um, I know nothing more than what's on the back of the bottle, so. You have samples of your barrel picks? Let me see if I can go track down my manager, because she may be able to. Awesome. Appreciate it. I've also seen the channel. I read, Thank I, you. You watched Kai, and I was like, <laughs> 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 oh, <man. laughs> I got that face, though, so you never can tell if it's me or not. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Not bad. TJ, nice to meet you, Matt. What do you know about this bottle here, Matt? I have a taste to be honest. Okay. I think we might have a bottle open if you want to taste it. I would love to taste that. The guy who owns it is a character. I like characters. So what I'm looking for is I, I want to be able to do some of our own store picks or at least be able to spread the word. You know, all these big distilleries, it's not hard to sell a bottle of Weller, right? So what I want to do is I'm trying to find some good local distilleries that are worth just like sharing and telling folks about. Yeah, he's kind of unique. He's up north northern Missouri. He's really into the different corn expressions. Uh, you know, he, he picks his own corn. Um, and he, what's really unique about it, it ages in containers. Okay. Like shipping containers. So it's it's real hot. Um, the Rubenesque is probably his bottle and bond is probably his most popular. And this was a barrel pick uh, for Brown Derby before I was working for Brown Derby. So being super hot, I'm expecting this to taste like a Texas whiskey. Yeah, you imagine putting it in a container, uh, yeah. how high. You know, his thoughts, I think, was just 
the extremes of the temperature is so much different from the rick house that it's driving the whiskey further into the wood and out which of the wood. Which is not always better. In the winter time, so. That's not bad. It has a little bit of that bitter oakiness, a ton of oakiness. Uh, just a slight touch of kind of what you might describe as that leathery tobacco from a Texas whiskey. It's a little thin for a hundred proof. So this is his cast strength that we did. And this is uh Oh uh, uses the bloody butcher yeah. red corn here. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a fresh glen on that one. Yeah, you can smell that bloody butcher corn. This one smells a little more grainy though. How old is this one? Do you know? It smells a little little youthful. I do not know. Like I said, these were selected before I was with Brandy. 121.6 proof. I can taste that bloody butcher corn, which is nice. It has a nice sweetness to it, but it does taste a little grainy and youthful. Like maybe it's two or three years old. Just hasn't quite had enough time to mature. Overall, I, I like what they're doing, though. They're doing some fun stuff there. All right, man, I appreciate the yeah. samples. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming in. I'd be all over those blue notes if I hadn't just bought one this morning. Did you get a barrel pick? I haven't bought yours. I bought another Blue Note. I've got one at home that I haven't opened. Somebody gave me. And then I saw one at a different store. Y'all are like the fifth store I've been at today. And I bought one at a different store. I don't think it was one of a Brown Derby store. And it's super cheap. Like that's, I'm pretty sure that's considerably cheaper than what I paid. I could be wrong. I'll have to check my, matter of fact, I got my receipts in my pocket. So I bought it at Whiskey River Market and I paid $60 for a Blue Note Juke Joint store pick. And y'all just like $45. It wasn't uncut. Yeah, it wasn't uncut. I passed on a Jay Rigers earlier. I had a Jay Rigers and I had something else that I bought that was a bottle and bond from, from Missouri. So I went with the Ben Holiday. I literally had this one right here and I had a Rigers, although it was like a Christmas edition or something. Is it Rieger? I'm totally mispronouncing the name. It's IE. That sounds like, IE sounds like Riger to me. It does. I don't make the rules. I'm not an English major. Do you think it's better than the Ben Holiday Bottle and Bond? That's the one I bought at the last place if over this one. Because I use the same, this isn't the pre-prohibition match, okay. but we do have our single barrels that are awesome. And those are from the same bonded okay. prohibition match. What's the best bottle you've got here? What's um, your favorite? My favorite right now is the Hidden Barn back there. That's the Neely and the Jackie collab. Have you heard of the Hidden Barn yet? I have not. Now we got to go back here again. Okay, Let's go. Try. Show me this. <laughs> so Hidden Barn is kind of the story. So Jackie used to be the head taster for Old Forester. Right. Her and her friend um, in the Neely family and the two other partners actually started Hidden Barn. So it's Kentucky, but they do batch programs. Okay. So it's all young, but it tastes awesome now so that means it's going to get even better with time this one they use like a wild uh flora so wild yeast okay so everything's got a little bit of a fun funk to it but i've been really impressed by it especially for like a new project we've only carried batch one and two but they're after batch four right now that's out in the market and what what is that one there is that batch one this is batch one yeah so okay one and are they one. sourcing this whiskey or are they making it they're making it okay yep but it's really really good and then uh so Neely, before they started doing their own, like doing stuff for Hidden Barn New Partnership, they won a lot of spirit competitions too. So kind of a sleeper anyway, but um, really, really good. But, and Jackie, knows she's doing, so now she is the master blender for them instead of the master taster for Forrester. Now she okay. just does her own thing. But this is my kind of go-to right now, personally. Yeah. All right, you sold me. Amy the bottle. With it. Jesus. <laughs> Being, uh, $75. <laughs> down the Women's drinks. History Month. You got to support it, right? Better be good. It's awesome. You sold me. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we'll open it right now if you want to. I ain't scared. You guys have a good day. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thought I was going to get out of here without buying anything. Yeah. I did not. I'm, I'm easily sold though, if it's something I haven't tried. She hooked me on that one. Everybody else is like, yeah, leave without buying. She's like, hell no, you ain't leaving without buying. We're going to get you something. All right, man, I appreciate it. Thank you. You want a bottle, bag? Yeah, sure. Give me a bag because I don't look like I'm a... Well, the funny thing is, is do you look more or less like an alcoholic if you walk out with a bag or a bottle? Because the bag says alcoholic to me. Bottle says, I bought a fine bottle I want to show off. Show it. Uh, is that, that, that's the line you have to cross to be looked upon as an alcoholic. Okay, I won't do that. 